What is happening, everybody? It's CJ here from Dream Diecast Cars, and after about three weeks of not putting out a video, I am finally back. And this is because I had to work really hard to a bunch of projects up until spring break, but I am back. And I decided to kick the show off with a bang and review the best diecast car I have in my collection. That's right. Today, I'm going to be doing a review of my Ferrari F430 Spider made by BBR. Now, if you would like to see the first video I made on this diecast car, then you can click right here. Get out of my face. Now, let's get rolling right into this review. First though, just look at it. Made up of over 700 pieces and handcrafted in Milan, it suddenly becomes clear why this diecast car costs so much. Even the paint job on this diecast car manages to astound me. I mean, it looks like it came straight out of Marinello. But that's enough talk. Now we have to look at the magnificence, which is the front of this diecast car. First off, the grills. They experience none of the problems which most diecast cars do. They're made of a real metal and are perforated. For example, you know they're good because you can see that little light. The light is coming from another set of grills, right here, on this slat on the side of the diecast car. Move up a little bit, and you see the beautiful Prancing Horse logo. And it is done very, very well. When you look close enough, you notice that this Ferrari badge is actually a completely different item than this hood. The badge is separately made. And the prancing horse and the Ferrari writing and other lettering is printed onto it. You can also see that it's separate by just looking at how the hood kind of swoops around it. You know, there's a little indent in the hood that goes around the badge and the badge pops out of the small indent. It's brilliantly made and it is practically real. Then you see those gorgeous headlamps. There's a little light right there that pops out of that area. And then this long strip of those beautiful LEDs. And of course, the turn indicator. The plastic shell concealing the lights from the elements is made of an extremely well-made clear plastic. Now, it might look a little bit bad on the camera, but that's just the light's reflection. Now, let's take a look at the side of this diecast car, and as usual, we'll start with the wheels. Now, the rims are made out of a beautiful metal that's sculpted perfectly to look like the ones on the actual Ferrari F430. Then, in the center, you'll notice the prancing horse, which is very similar to the logo on the front and this one which I'll talk about later. Then you see the five nuts that are around the prancing horse, which also look beautiful. I think that they're separate parts. They most likely are. And then you see that the brake discs go through the calipers, as they should. And I mean, even the brake discs on this car look beautiful. If I'm complimenting a thing like brake discs on a car, you know that that car is something special because... That's not usually something you notice. When you look a little bit above the wheel, you notice the Ferrari shield, which looks beautiful and is very similar to uh, this Ferrari logo on the front, as it too is a separate metal piece that is uh, printed on, looks beautiful, and then is placed on the car. And then you look to the right at this mirror, which is a beautiful, also separate metal piece which has the word F430 printed on it. BBR also stays true to the real Ferrari F430 Spider by not having F430 engraved on this mirror. When you move a little farther up the side, you notice this door handle, then this grill, and then right here this fuel filler cap, which is usually not something of interest. However, this one opens and usually there's a little metal piece. Let's move back real quick here. There is a little metal piece. Let's get a picture of that up on the screen. Uh, 
and or it's not metal. Oh, it is metal actually. But what I meant to say was magnetic, and you can open this and another piece in the car that we'll get to later with it. However, I'm really embarrassed to say that I cannot find it at the moment. So uh, hopefully I'll find that soon. But this right here, this little piece that I got with the Kyosho, should so suffice. So you can sort of. Maybe I'm wrong. There we go. Got that open. It's much easier with the magnetic thing. It's a great design that they have. It's totally my fault, though. Then uh, you look on the inside. You see just a uh, little fuel thing that you would actually put the fuel in. And it's just uh, amazing detail on this die-cast car. Now, at the back of this die-cast car, there's something that I'm very angry about. Uh, first, let's play the tapes. That is the video that I made originally of my Ferrari F430 Spider made by BBR. Now take that off the screen. When looking at the back, you'll notice that the prancing horse is gone, and I have no idea why. Because I have probably taken it out max twice, taken it out of his case twice probably since I made that video. I have no idea where it went. Uh, I just don't know what happened. It wasn't in the case. I... I can't find it anywhere. I, I'm searching. I really hope it turns up, but that I can't stop looking at it now. It, that really made me mad. I don't know whether to blame PBR, though, or if someone else maybe knocked it off somehow, but I have no idea what happened there. So I don't know whether to really mark him down on that or not, but I guess that's just what happened. And then right here you have the beautiful metal mesh grill. Uh which is real metal, real indentations, or real perforations, just looks astounding. Then when you look at the taillights, you will see that they are done beautifully out of a nice, hard, expensive-feeling plastic uh, with the red around the outside for the brakes and orange for the turns and hazards. Then you look down here at these exhausts, which look great, just very realistic. You've got this little kind of like hole around it just like you would on the rail car and then the exhaust tips are made of real metal when you look down a little bit and I know it's really dark but you see this little uh, perforated mesh here with the uh, diffuser at the back and then uh, up here you see the license plate F430 Spider uh, which looks I guess good it's not really too much to say about that. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the back of this die-cast car. So now, let's flip it around and take a look at the trunk. Similar to die-cast car companies like Kyosho and Minichamps, BBR has a small button on the bottom of their die-cast car, which helps you pop up the trunk. You pop that up a little bit, then pull it, and you're done. And it's actually pretty clever because they've got this little metal piece right here that looks exactly like the one on the real car, and it's actually functional, so that's really cool. Now usually the trunk is the part of the review that's tedious for you and me. I have to use a lot of big words to try to make it interesting, and you guys have to sit through me trying to make a trunk seem interesting. But, in the BBR, that's not the case because of these little luggages that they come with. Pretty awesome, right? Look at all this stuff. We got two, and then a third one in the bottom. If I can reach in there, sorry. Each one is made out of a nice material. It's kind of like a expensive plasticky feel. It almost feels like leather, but I'm sure it's not. They all have a prancing horse on them, I think, except for this. Well, this one does, I guess, at the very top. Then this prancing horse. Prancing horse. Flip it over. Right there, it says F430. F430 and... Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> and then this one says F430 on the front. Then inside the trunk, there's that mechanism that I told you about. 
a little storage thing over here and then another mechanism on top and felt all around so uh... it looks really good and these little luggages also help make or all, they just help demonstrate how expensive this diecast car is and how exclusive it is to own one this diecast car is almost like the ferrari of real life now to the engine, which is made up of 200 plus parts by itself. Looking at it like this is stunning enough. The detail is really nice. The way the word Ferrari pops out on each of those little red things. I don't know what to call them. But something that my camera can't demonstrate, sadly, is the depth of the engine. You can try to see it here, but I don't think it'll ever work. It just goes down so deep, and there are so many tiny parts in there. They replicated the whole engine, and it is just insane. I swear, I have never seen anything like this. With these little hydraulics on the side that raise and lift the engine, then you've got all those grills on top that are real and perforated, and then this plastic right here. But, I mean, I... For all you serious diecast car collectors out there, I really hope at some point in your life you just get to see one of these in person because the depth is just insane. Now let's move along to the interior. But first, I have to give you guys a warning. And this is for any of you potential buyers out here. On everything, almost everything on the interior, there is a sticky residue. But don't worry. This is supposed to be like this, and what it is, is this thing that BBR puts on everything that is supposed to be leather in the real car, and what it does is it makes everything look like real leather. As I'm sure you already know, this car isn't supposed to be touched and messed around with. That's why BBR put this sticky stuff all over the interior, because it didn't matter about people touching it and stuff. But, what they did manage to accomplish with it is this beautiful look on all the leather things. I mean, it really does look like you're looking at real leather. It's insane. The steering wheel is also done beautifully, and I'm sorry it's so dark. But, uh, what you get is the, of course, the Prancing Horse logo in the middle. Engine start and stop, traction control options. Then behind it you see... The rev counter, speedometer, down low here, you see all the little buttons for the launch control, hazards, just looks really nice. Then you've got the F430, or it says F430 above all these air vents, as it should, and then below them there's a radio and a bunch of buttons. The floors are all covered in felt, the pedals are all made of real metal, and the same can be said for this door sill right here, uh, which also has the word Ferrari engraved on it. Another thing that looks nice and realistic are these windows. And I know you can probably barely see them right now, but this is the window right here. It's made of a nice thick plastic, and it barely pops out of the car, making it look as though someone was actually driving this car. Then, when you look on the passenger side, and sorry about the weird lighting, I'm holding my phone in one hand and this is going to be really difficult to do, but you'll notice this uh, glove box right here, uh, which is the other thing that you are supposed to open with that magnetic piece, which I told you about earlier, but I bet I can open it with this. Just got to maybe knock at it a few times. There we go. It's down now, and what you see is... A flashlight right there, and the car papers right there. And that about sums up all the magnificent things on this brilliantly made diecast car. So now, it's time to do the ratings. You can find this car for about $350 to up to $700, and each one has different perks for the price. I got one of the cheaper ones. This one came for about 400 bucks, and I would say, even though 
This is the most expensive diecast car in my collection. It is worth the money, so I would have to give it an A, including price in the rating. <clears throat> and then, of course, without including price in the rating, I would have to get a, give it an A+, plus, maybe like 99%, because I guess that badge fell off the back, and I'm actually really mad about that, but I just don't know whether to blame it on BBR or whether it was human error. Well, that's it. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll be putting out videos on a weekly schedule again, so stay tuned for next week. Goodbye, everyone.